like to welcome Colin Ahern. Colin is the manager of the Kilkenny Ormond Hotel and he is also at the moment president of Kilkenny Chamber of Commerce. Both jobs uh, were assigned to him before 2020. Both jobs uh, required a lot of intelligence and management skills. Now they require a lot of different skills, skills that you wouldn't have thought would be needed uh, when, uh, when you took on the various jobs. In uh, looking at your role, first of all, as uh, manager of the Kilkenny Ormond Hotel, when did you take over as manager there, Colin? Um, <clears throat> Ian, thanks very much for having me uh, at your meeting today. Um, yeah, look, I, I started uh, in the Ormond Hotel in 2009, <clears throat> having previously worked in another hotel in Kilkenny for, for, for three years. So I came to Kilkenny in 2006 um, and started in the Ormond in 2009. So I've been here for 11 years. I didn't think uh, when I started in the Ormond Hotel in 11 years ago that I would be general manager still <clears throat> of the Ormond 11 years on, but I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, my time here. Um, and we, I've gone through, gone through a number of, number of changes in terms of um, when I joined, we were just, uh, we were really getting stuck into the middle of, uh, of an economic depression that really hit our business for a long time and took us a long time to recover. And uh, we've just started into another one now. So it, it certainly has been interesting to say the least. Well, interesting is one thing, challenging is another. Uh, what hotels, uh, where had you come from in the hotel business? What other towns did you work in? Yeah, I, look, I was living, um, I, I, I'm from Limerick, <coughs> West Limerick, and I, I trained there in a number of well-known hotels at their manor, um, at the Woodlands House Hotel and a couple of, couple of hotels in the city. Um, and then when I, when I was training in college, uh, I primarily worked in a hotel in Stevens Green called the Conrad Hotel <clears throat> for about six years. Um, and then um, I, I moved briefly to Dunleary, to the Royal Marine Hotel as my first management position. And then I moved to Kerry um, and, and, my wife and, and settled down and had babies and all that sort of stuff down there. And I worked in Tralee and Dingle um, and in a place called Park Nassilla. Oh, yeah. Which is down in um, which is down in uh, Schneen on the Ring of Kerry, um, and um, thoroughly enjoyed our time down there. I suppose opportunities arose then within a company called Great Southern Hotel, Great Southern Hotels, that uh, CIE company, aware of they are no longer. Yes, and they they had me in two two places in firstly in Ross Lair uh, Harbour, which was my first uh, position as a general manager, and then uh, a year later I moved to Derry. And I lived and worked in Derry for three years, um, running the City Hotel in Derry. And then the opportunity came to come Hi to everybody. Uh, came to come to Kilkenny. Um, my my mother's side of the family uh, were Kilkenny for a long time. My grandfather John Lowry, so my great grandfather John Lowry, settled in Kilkenny 108 years ago. I could. Uh, and he opened a hardware shop called Lowry's uh, in 1908. Uh, and I, my two uncles still living here, Jim and Jack Lowry, uh, still live in, in Kilkenny. So I have good, good Kilkenny stock. And so there was, when, when the opportunity came to, to, to come down to the uh, River Court Hotel as the general manager back in 2006, I jumped at it. Mm. And uh, then you were, you were with the River Court, was it for three years? It was three years working for a man called Xavier McAuliffe. Oh, yes. River Court at the time. Uh, and um, he, he had just opened... Uh, Lyrath <clears throat> about a year previously, so I just missed the television program. You may you may remember. Oh, I do indeed, and, yeah. uh, and it wasn't necessarily the best advertising uh, uh, program for for him personally. Uh, One wouldn't have thought so, but it raised the profile of of Lyrath and certainly got everyone talking about it. Um, yes. And uh, that sort of marketing isn't cheap, um, no matter oh, what way you look at it. In, in a way, you, can, you have to say there's no such thing as bad publicity. Uh, he was, uh, it, I, I will always remember the receptionist reading the paper the day after he closed or he got the mayor rather than Bertie to open uh, the hotel because the entrance uh, didn't have planning permission. <clears throat> Mind you. It's exactly the same as it uh, then as it was now, or as, uh, as it is now. Um, and uh, the receptionist opened the paper and said, and put her head in her hand, said, oh, Xavier, what were you up to? 
uh, because of his comments uh, about Bertie at the time. But uh, that's the sort of thing that makes for good PR and good television. Whether it makes Certainly for got everyone talking about it. I suppose yeah. then, um, as we hit into the recession, I was I was lucky. Um, the the uh, the job came up here in the Ormond in uh, May um, 20, uh, 2009, uh, and I applied and was lucky enough to get it. Uh, I was looking for, I suppose, a bigger challenge. Um, the, the the Ormond is is a bigger property with with more more arms to it in terms of conference banqueting and 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 those those sort of things. And uh, I saw an opportunity to progress, took the job, um, and was lucky l lucky enough to get it and accepted it. And about two months after I accepted the position, the business I had been in went into receivership. Um, wow. so it, was, it was timely. Um, yeah. was quite, uh, I was quite lucky. And it, the, the, the other business went into receivership of no fault of its own other than the death that was against it um, yes. and, uh, and the economic, um, the, economic um, the, 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 way, the way everything was at the time. Yeah. Um, the Ormond Hotel has a number of unique features. It's set right in the centre of the, of the city. It has a large car park beside it. It has a leisure centre. What are the unique features that sell it to potential customers? <clears throat> well, you've just said it there. I mean, our location is everything. Uh, when I came to Kilkenny, from a hospitality point of view, the centre of Kilkenny was very much um, John Street and around the bridge and down that part of the area and down that part of a uh, part of our city uh, and with the development of, of the likes of the left bank and the Ormond and the Hibernian and different hotels that are where and the Pembroke Hotel that, would, that, that is a little bit that that's there a little bit um, le, um, not, not as long it really has developed this side of the city in terms of hospitality so people I find want to be want to be here and um, you can walk around Kilkenny um, I, very easily and everything's on a doorstep. I, I, I was at a wedding fair a number of years ago in Dublin uh, and a lady came up to me and said, said, I know your hotel. She said, I love staying there. She said, the beauty of it is that I can go, I can go back during the night and change my shoes. And I thought that that's not, that's not a marketing uh, an yeah. issue. Out of of boy, but... you know, you're out for dinner, you can come back, you can stay with me because you can change your shoes halfway through the night. Yeah, but but for some people I've that's seen, important. Yeah, I've never seen that used in any advertising. But you never know what choices people make or for what reasons they make those choices. And many of most are very lucky to have to, to be the only hotel in the city centre that has full leisure facilities. <coughs> yes. Uh, uh, now at the moment, so I mean there are other hotels on the outskirts like the New Park and and uh, Hotel Kenny and the Spring Hill Court Hotel that have full leisure facilities and swimming pools and all that sort of stuff. Um, but um, to be to have that in the city centre is unique. Yeah, uh, but one of the key things that brings people back isn't so much the facilities as the way they feel, they feel that they have been treated. So staff training is obviously a critical part and the way that staff engage with customers is obviously uh, a, a huge part of the success of any hotel and you can't continue without it. What do you do in relation to training of staff? Um, I have, I suppose, just to, just to give you a background, I have on currently employed in the Ormond Hotel, we have 127 staff. Um, that would have been um, at a height in the summer last year at somewhere just under 150. Now, I suppose, um, hotels hotels a lot especially at the moment because they're in the news and hospitality and tourism is in the news hotels tend to get lumped into into the same grouping as pubs and rest at pubs and restaurants and bars and restaurants and it's really important i suppose to point out that as businesses we're 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 big business to to a region and to a city like kilkenny um our our wage bill um per per annum uh, and Again, pointing out that the Ormond Hotel compared to the likes of Lyrath or the New Park or Langtons is relatively small in terms of the business that we're our, our, our turnover. Uh, our wage bill is is just shy of of two and a half million euros per annum. So there's a lot of money going in directly into the economy here in in, in Kilkenny. Uh, also, I suppose the biggest difference is that I would have I have um, 
eight people employed in the business that earn above 50,000 euros per annum. So when people talk about, um, when people talk about, um, you know, low paid jobs in particular, there, there's quite a few people. I have another 22 people that get paid above 32,000 euros per annum. So there's, they're, they're, they're not always, you know, particularly low, low paid jobs in hotels. Whereas if you have a pub or a restaurant, you generally have the owner, a manager, a head chef, and outside of that, people are generally paid by hour or pound. In, in a lot of cases. So hotels are different. I have a full-time uh, HR manager. Um, we have a sister property in Limerick called the Absolute Hotel. Uh, and she is the HR manager for the two properties between the two hotels with 200 and, 218 staff, I believe. <clears throat> so she's responsible for putting together um, um, training, um, training for, first of all, ensuring that, that all our administrative functions are carried out um, correctly and that everything is is um, that that we're on top of everything in that regard but also to ensure that we're we're maximizing the potential of of, of our staff um, what I look for is is you know in term from from the operational positions in terms of waiters and waitresses and people like that is we're looking for someone with with, with, with good acumen people that are friendly um, they don't particularly need to have a skill set where we're, we have training plans and standards of procedure in place that ensure that we can train people to the level that we need them to do it. Uh, but when we're looking at the jobs or the roles such as sales and marketing, revenue management, department heads um, that are running departments that could be turning over in excess of one, two million, it's important that we're finding skilled, experienced people. And to keep, to keep those people engaged it's important that we have good uh, training um, opportunities for them to progress. Um, and in terms of our own staff, it's always um, it's always cheaper for us to be, to be able to provide um, uh, ways for people to progress inside the organisation than going out and finding new people every time a, a yes. position is available. So upskilling our, our current work for workforce and promoting from within is really important to us. Yeah, I think you're right there. Uh, growing your own wood is a, a, an expression that I've heard about uh, that people who are experienced in the culture of that particular organization, when they move on, they, they, they don't need to be retrained in that, in the ethos that the, that the company uh, adopts. Um, the last couple of months have been perhaps the mo more challenging than any other period in the life of Ireland, but also in the life of hotels and also in your own life. You were, how long were you closed for during uh, the, the <clears throat> pandemic? We were closed for uh, just shy of, of um, four months. Um, hotels were allowed to open on the 29th of June. We waited yeah. until the 8th of July, the 9th of July, sorry. <clears throat> we reopened on the 9th of July. Um, it was, um, everything's different. Um, it's particularly challenging. I think, you know, some, some of my industry were very lucky because they were in, in the short term, because they were in areas that people wanted to be and perceived as being safe, um, particularly the west coast of Ireland, where um, a number of properties and businesses that I, that I would know and be familiar with um, recorded, um, recorded turnover that would have been in, in excess of what they did in July and August in 2019. Wow. Um, so so it, 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 it's, it's mixed. The, the, the reaction to, to this pandemic and how it affects our businesses is really mixed and it depends on where people are in the country uh, and the type of business that they have. There are a couple of businesses and properties in Kilkenny that are hugely successful um, successful summers um, and, did, and did really, really well and there were others that were a lot more affected by it. I suppose um, it's, it, 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 what, what goes around comes around in a way and it's, it's, it's circles and roundabouts um, those businesses in the west coast of Ireland in the wild Atlantic way that would have been would have had very successful summer times um, and summer periods are going to see their revenues reduced to somewhere in the region of 25 to 30 percent of of what they would have been in 2019 and 2018. Yes. Um, whereas Kilkenny, because of our proximity to Dublin, Kilkenny, you know, we we didn't have that huge. Uh, uptake in terms in terms of revenue just after we reopened and on average the hotels achieved somewhere between 60 and 70 percent of the sort of revenues they did in 2019 but I suppose the upside of that is that we're not going to see a huge fall off and whilst it's still devastating 
um, not, you know, to, well, it's still a devastating figure, uh, we're probably going to achieve about 50% um, of the turnover we achieved in 2019 for the rest of the year. Now, what that means is that we'll be able to remain open seven days a week. Um, we'll be able to keep uh, everyone employed, but we wouldn't be able to do it without um, the, the sort of um, assistance that's there for the government in terms of the EWSS primarily, uh, and also the, 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 um, the, the, way, the way they've held uh, the, the uh, commercial rates <coughs> fees that should have been paid. Commercial rates for, uh, a lot of people when I speak to them <coughs> are struck by the, the, the huge amount of commercial rates that properties such as myself pay um, um, in, in the, in, in the, when it was changed and it was, it was revalued uh, back in 2019, I believe early 2019, my commercial rates bill fell from, uh, two, from 215,000 euros per year down to 125,000 euros per year. So um, I, I, I speak to people regularly that have big businesses and profitable businesses and they employ a lot of people. And they're always struck by the amount of money that, that hospitality businesses in particular are paying in terms of commercial rates. So it's a big bill and it's important that, it's, that it, is, it is held until the time that we're able to pay again. Yes. Of course, the other downside of that is that the local authorities are, <clears throat> that we depend on to provide a number of services are going to be deprived of money, which may eventually mean that taxes of different types will increase. And we can't throw that all back on the commercial premises that are trying to recover from the, uh, the pandemic. Um, so who knows what way things will de develop and evolve. Uh, have you noticed any change? Uh, I mean, this year we've all been encouraged to have what are called staycations. Uh, have you noticed, obviously you're not getting the American tourists, you're not getting the European tourists. Has there been a, a a noticeable increase in the number of Irish tourists staying in the Kilkenny Ormond Hotel uh, over the summer period uh, in particular. Oh yeah, Irish people were hugely supportive of the staycation idea uh, in Kilkenny and, and throughout the country. I mean, there, were, there was, I know of one hotel in Kilkenny that had 95% occupancy for August. Which is which is big numbers, and 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 that's you know that's all Irish people. Um, of course, Irish people were hugely supportive of of hotels and accommodation providers in general. I mean, there's 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 Airbnbs, there's guest houses, there's there's there, there's every type of accommodation provider. I mean, in, in Kilkenny, there's there's you know three and four star, uh, three four and five star hotel you know hotels. There's only somewhere in the region of about eleven hundred beds. <coughs> But, you know, when you take into all the self-catering, guest houses and everything else, there's another two and a half thousand beds on top of that. So people were supportive of all types of accommodation. And as far as, you know, anyone I spoke to thoroughly enjoyed the experience. Um, Kilkenny has managed its way through the pandemic quite well. Um, we're, we're, we're seeing that touch wood in terms of the sort of numbers that are, that are around Kilkenny and, and, and the people that have, have COVID. Um, any of the businesses that I've visited in Kilkenny myself um, ha, are, are working to the letter of the law and doing everything they can to ensure that their guests and their visitors and their customers are safe. The County Council have done a brilliant job in terms of the city and helping to make the spaces bigger and more comfortable and, and uh, make ensure there's plenty of outdoor space for people. So I think Kilkenny has adapted and worked really, really well um, to help give people a reason to come to Kilkenny. Kilkenny tourism as well, it's like when, when, when other destinations um, had stopped promoting their regions, Kilkenny tourism may, made a decision to keep activity going in, in April and May and June and to keep popping up on people's feeds, whether that was on social media or whatever the case might be, uh, so that when people were ready to travel again, that Kilkenny was at the forefront of their thoughts. Yeah, of course, one of the reasons that people come to Kilkenny is because of the social activities that they can engage in. But a lot of those are closed off now. So what are guests doing when they come to Kilkenny? People are spending a lot more time out and about, which is great. Um, there's well, there is help there. <laughs> There, there, there is so much to do and engage with. Um, there's a new website 
uh, that's just been launched. I would encourage everyone to, to check it out, outdoorkilkenny.ie. Um, and it, 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 it has the vast array of things that people can do on our doorstep, from walking to dining to zip lining, you name it. Um, yeah. There is so much to do. And so that's what people are doing. Um, you know, I'm finding myself during the day that it's a lot quieter. People are out and about. Um, but people are, people are more comfortable now. They're spending more time in the evening time in hotels. We've had to, you know, increase our offering in the evening time to ensure people have more choice because I'm feeding more people. Um, I'm catering for more people in the evening time because in a lot of cases, they're, they're more comfortable staying here and, and relaxing. They also have the, the amount of time that they can spend out and about is limited. Um, mm -hmm. I'll have to close our, our bars and restaurants and have everyone off the premises by 11.30 in the evening time. That goes for hotels as well. We're not allowed to have anyone sitting in lounges or in bars. People have to be gone to their rooms. So people are dining earlier and changing how they're doing things. We're also seeing that in terms of events, um, which we can't hold, but we can do weddings. Um, and uh, weddings for up to 50 people at the moment under the current um, guidelines. And what we're finding is people are, are choosing to go through this, to have the ceremony earlier so that they're able to have a longer day with their family and friends in a hotel setting uh, and finish earlier. Yeah, that's, uh, and we'll see, I, I know I conduct weddings myself and I've noticed that, but I always encourage people to have the wedding relatively early in the day because if people arrive for a wedding at one o'clock, they may not have had lunch and they won't get eating until maybe four o'clock and they're going to be ravenous at that stage. Um, so having the earlier wedding, I think, uh, earlier in the day does help. Um, I want to, one of the areas that has dropped off, of course, is the business use of hotels. People who hold meetings there, uh, are, are they still uh, using hotels for meeting purposes? Generally, private business isn't. Um, they, they can do. Uh, I'm still allowed to host uh, gatherings for business or educational purposes of up to 50 people indoors once there's two metre social distancing. <clears throat> so I'm allowed to do them. But in general, business isn't. Uh, yeah conducting um, uh, face to face meetings at the moment um, i've i 've been lucky and been successful in in, in, in being able to get uh, a couple <laughs> of, of state bodies to use the hotel for different uh, for different events and different things that they 're simply not able to host in their own in, in, in their own buildings um, and uh, I have another educational group as well um, that use another part of the hotel so my meeting space at the moment is is, is, is in use quite a bit of the time, um, but there's no outside spend that we would yes. have been to, you know, the lunches, the dinners, the events that would have gone around, those sort of meetings is totally gone. Uh, in essence, my business has gone from, from being 50% accommodation and 50% food and beverage to being 80% accommodation and 20% food and right. beverage. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, being manager of the hotel is only one aspect of your life. The other aspect, uh, and you and I, I think, were photographed the same day, handing one chain over to the other. Uh, you're president of Kilkenny Chamber of Commerce in perhaps the most challenging period that the Chamber of Commerce has ever faced. I just walked up High Street the other day and saw the number of shops and premises that had for sale, for let uh, signs outside of them. What, is, uh, what has the impact been like for the businesses that are members of Kilkenny Chambers of, Chamber of Commerce? Um, it, 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 it varies incredibly, Ian. Uh, we have some members that are doing better um, than they were doing this time last year. We have others that have, haven't been impacted at all, and we have other businesses that have been, that have yes. been devastated by it. Um, and it's about uh, responding um, in, the, in, in, in a suitable manner to everyone. Um, yeah, look, you're right. Um, I remember sitting down with John um, a couple of years ago and agreeing to become uh, the vice president. And little did I think at the time that, that this period would, 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 would ever come across. And I suppose ultimately um, my presidency has been virtual um, uh, since, you know, since I took over in June. Um, really, um, and we spoke about it earlier, um, the, the chamber's job now is to ensure um, is to ensure that we do that that we're there to support business, but we're there also to lobby for business. Um, and we mentioned it there in terms of commercial rates and the commercial rates not being paid by businesses. 
um, you know, that's that's where the chamber steps in. The chamber steps in to ensure that local, to ensure that, that that our government is aware that local government needs that support to support business, to knock on the doors, to talk to the ministers, and we have a way of of getting in. I mean, in the last couple of weeks, I've been speaking to our local TDs and getting and getting that message across. Um, <clears throat> we also we also sit on and the members of our board sit on a huge amount of committees. Um, and and boards of different organisations from and and we represent business on the likes of Kilkenny Tourism, the SPCs, you know, Age Friendly, Destination Kilkenny, Kilkenny Leader, and business isn't always represented very well. Um, sometimes in 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 those in 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 those organisations, so it's important that business is there, is is, is represented well on all those organisations to ensure that. When decisions are made and money's being spent, that we're looking at the at, at the bigger picture. So that's that's uh, that's where I see the importance of uh, of the chamber at the moment. Mm. Can you tell me a bit about the role of being president uh, of the chamber of commerce? I know that uh, we, we have two members on uh, on in Rotary, uh, John Hurley and Roisin McQuillan, who work for the chamber. But your role is that of a volunteer, uh, someone who does this. Uh, in a voluntary capacity, uh, but what is your specific role uh, as president? Look, it's very, it's, it's very ceremonially, and to be honest with you, all the work is done by John, John and Rochine. Um, they've been brilliant. It's been just, I mean, the chamber is a business as well, uh, and it's been really, really hard, uh, hard hit by uh, by by the pandemic, just as other businesses have done, and they've worked through all that time um, to ensure that. The chamber has survived, and and over the years, the chamber has gone through some tough years. Um, but luckily, because of because of the way it's run, we're in a position that we can survive um, the um, the way things are at the moment. So my role is 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 you know on every, every week I um, I speak with John and Roisin. We we go through the 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 business for the week and what needs to be done, and talk about the, our goals and 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 what our, our aims and our targets. But in general, it, it's it's ceremonial, and you know I, I'm someone that I, I have the I have the chain sitting over there, and and whilst I don't get as many photo opportunities uh, as as other presidents may may have had in the past, um, it's 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 really about profile, and it's about keeping the profile of the chamber out there, maintaining, helping to maintain a healthy membership, um, a healthy and varied membership uh, in our chamber, and. Um, where possible, using my role to voice uh, the opinions um, and to lobby on behalf of our members. And that's really where it is. The hard yards uh, are done by, by, by the people that work in our office. Oh, yeah, but it still requires that uh, the public image, you're, in many ways, you're the public face of uh, the chamber during your tenure as president. Can I just ask in relation to membership of, uh, of chamber in Kilkenny, not every business is a member, but it, for example, are places that are, uh, that have national or international uh, uh, places, uh, retail outlets, such as Boots or Argus or uh, Lidl or Aldi, uh, are they, do they get involved locally? Uh, in, in, um, in, a, in, in a certain, I mean, I, I, they do, I, they do get involved locally. Um, we don't have a lot of those businesses as members. Uh, our, mem our, our members in, in, in a lot of cases tend to be, tend to be local, um, Unique individual businesses. We we have big business. We have we have businesses that are members that are that are banks, uh, and we have smaller members that are jewelers and and grocery store owners. So we have such a vast array of of of, of members. And to be honest with you, Ian, whatever we do, you know, we don't sit down and think, look, uh, you know, what we're doing now w w will only represent the people that are our members. Yes, we're, we're working for business in. Kilkenny Chamber is working for business in Kilkenny, and Chambers Ireland is representing all businesses on the island and doing and doing whatever whatever they can. Any of the events we run are open to members and to non-members, um, and and we hope that people will join our events and join what we do and see the benefit of being uh, and join up. Uh, and the more people we have as members, and the, the more variety we have in terms of organisations and businesses, the stronger the chamber can become. 
Indeed. Um, I mean, one of the great events that you run every year is the Kilkenny Business Awards. Obviously, that's a major challenge for this year as to whether it will be run or, or how it might be run in the future. But it, it was a unique event in many ways in that it brought people who weren't necessarily members uh, together for a, a social occasion where they got to talk to, uh, to other businesses of like mind and look at promoting not just their own business, but Kilkenny Inc, for want of a better term. Um, what's going to happen in relation to the Kilkenny Business Awards this year, or do you know yet? Well, we don't know exactly yet. Um, I suppose, look, ju just to say, first of all, you're absolutely right. We, there have been winners of the overall Business of the Year Award, <coughs> awards that at the time weren't members of, of Kilkenny Chambers of Commerce. There have been winners of individual awards that haven't been members, but have been but have been welcomed to join and to, and to put their businesses in for awards, and have have then seen the value of of what they can be of 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 those awards to to a business. So it is important to point out those those awards are very are are very independent um, and and pick out the best business whether it is a member of the Chamber of Commerce or not. Um, you're absolutely right. In terms of a dinner, an evening uh, in Lairat with 500 people uh, plus sitting down and enjoying uh, awards and good food and great entertainment, that's not going to happen this year. <clears throat> we are looking at a couple of different options. One, um, and, and we have a subcommittee that are working on it at the moment. Uh, we're considering some sort of online uh, event that would happen whereby we would recognise businesses uh, uh, this year in what they've done specifically around uh, COVID-19 and surviving and what they may have done to help other people through COVID-19. Um, and <clears throat> we're also considering ho hosting an event in early 2021, although that looks increasingly unlikely that any, um, any, any hotels will be in a position to host events uh, of that size even in early 2021. So we have a subcommittee that's working on it at the moment. We, we have an, a, um, an event, a high profile event, that we don't want to lose any, any of that profile. And so it's important for us to come up with something um, and get it out there. Uh, and that's, that's what we'll be doing in some shape or form, but we don't have the answer yet. Yeah, it's a bit like ourselves in relation to our high profile event, which is the Remembrance Tree Project. Uh, we're struggling to know how that can be replicated in a COVID, in a COVID environment. But you mentioned there that your, uh, the engagement that you have with other organisations. And I'm just wondering what the uh, level of cooperation or otherwise is with Kilkenny Tourism uh, between the Chamber and you're both in many ways promoting Kilkenny. Uh, the, the Chamber has a different role in that it's promoting individual businesses, but Kilkenny Tourism uh, is also promoting, as I said, Kilkenny Inc. Do you, does the Chamber work closely with uh, uh, Kilkenny Tourism? There are, some, there, there are some synergies there without a shadow of a doubt, but they're very separate organisations. <clears throat> um, in, indeed, in, in, in a, number of, a number of regions, you'll find that, that the Chamber of Commerce and their tourism body are one. Um, a couple of them spring to mind would be Tralee, for example, Killarney, um, their Chambers of Commerce are also are called their Chambers of Commerce and Tourism. Um, I think it's important to, 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 to highlight the different roles that, that both organisations do that are really important. Um, Kilkenny Tourism is a marketing body. Its sole, its sole job is to market Kilkenny to the international and domestic traveller. Um, but there are things that happen um, and, and so it's not, it, it, it can't get bogged down in, pro yes. in product development. And that's where the chamber comes in with the likes of the, um, the medieval mile pass and, and other uh, ways of, of helping to engage visitors when they're here and working with activity providers that are businesses and, and, and those sort of things. Whereas Kilkenny Tourism's job is simply to get them here. The chamber's job is to engage with the businesses that are um, that are facilitating them when they are here. Yeah, that's a very good way of putting it. I mean, the, uh, the people come for what's in Kilkenny, including the unique shops. Uh, they don't want to go to downtown Mullingar, which is exactly the same as downtown Athlone, unless they have individual local shops, local 
services that are not available elsewhere. Uh, as the, and it's the unique bit that attracts people, as well as the tourist. Uh, we want them to spend their money uh, as much as visit, visit places. Um, it's really, look, look, Ian, you're absolutely right. And we spoke about it the other day on Saturday when we were talking on the phone briefly about, about ambition. You know, like, like Kilkenny, as far, you know, in, in my opinion, Kilkenny has reached about 50% of its potential in terms of tourism. <clears throat> we talk about numbers and, and visitor numbers. There are, you know, a, a city like Kilkenny shouldn't have shoulder months like it does. You know, accommodation providers in, in Kilkenny have, have six good months and six average months. You know, there are and, and, and six average slash poor months. There is so much more potential in terms of, in ter terms of delivering uh, a mixed tourism product. And I'm not talking about the coaches that pull up outside the castle, <clears throat> you know, and, and, and the argument of whether they should be pulling up inside, outside the castle or somewhere, somewhere else in Kilkenny, thus ensuring that they are taking in our whole city as opposed to a whistle stop of Castle, uh, of, of, of castle Road. Um, but, you know, there, there's business tourism, conference tourism, and a huge amount of potential in delivering, in delivering that. Uh, and, and whether that's true, uh, infrastructure that's already here, like um, Lyrat uh, and, and, and some, of the, some of the bigger hotels, or the Watergate, or, or even in the development of, of, of some sort of product in, in the, um, in, in, in the uh, Abbey Quarter. Um, the potential to grow uh, profitable, um, really important strains of tourism in Kenny is there. And like I said, we, we've only reached 50% of our potential here. There is so much more to do. Yeah, well, I was encouraged and heartened to see that the down the, the, the month that things are often worst is November, and Kilkenny will have three festivals happening in November: Subtitle, uh, Kilkenomics, and the Cat Laughs. Uh, so, those the fact that they're happening at all is a miracle, but the fact that they're all happening in close proximity in perhaps what is the the most bleak month of the year um, is very encouraging and hopeful, uh, not just of, uh, for the festivals, but for the, as a general sense of resilience that Kilkenny is uh, attacking uh, the, the, the virus in providing something that people will be attracted to. Look, I speak to people, hospitality people um, all over the country, and they're so envious of the array of festivals that we have in, in this county and, and, and city. Um, we, uh, traditionally, uh, Kilconomics, the subtitle, are in November and December and have been for the last number of years and are a brilliant addition to shoulder months. Uh, Cat Laughs uh, is looking at the second, the, the second weekend. They're still, um, they're still provisional. Um, uh, the the, the, the programmes <clears throat> haven't, haven't been released yet because they're still dependent on, on, on you know, things, things can change so much. Of course. But so much to do. Um, and and so much. I mean, you know, you know, even, even even taking in the early part of the year with with um, with trad fest now has become so popular and is so well run. Um, and some of our festivals are world renowned. I mean, people uh, the the even the the roots festival that used to be known as the rhythm and roots festival, that that from from an accommodation provider that is now. Um, the most uh, successful weekend, the, the, the May Bank Holiday weekend, and the array of international visitors that come um, festival is, is second to none. Look, uh, you know, obviously the Arts Week in August, which is 10 days, and you know, is it a time of the year when people travel, uh, is, is, I suppose, the most, the, the most successful and, and the most well-known. But in terms of weekend events, the roots, the roots festival, as it's known now, that was the rhythm and roots, is you know is absolutely fabulous. So we're just so lucky, and we're the envy. And I, I, I speak to people from tourism destinations all over Ireland, and they come to Kilkenny to see us. We've we, we, we've had people from Cork, from Killarney, from Athlone, um, from Galway, from Clifton, from Westport, from the north, uh, to Kilkenny in the last four or five years to see what we're doing and how we're doing it. And, and in terms of the buy-in between the local authority and uh, and private business, um, they don't have that anywhere else. They don't have anywhere else that there's no hotel in Killarney that that pays five thousand euros per year into a kitty that we go out and market like I do. 
And you multiply that by 14, 15 hotels plus match funding from, from the local authority. And we have a significant fighting fund that we can go out and market Kilkenny and take on the other destinations. And they don't simply have that in, in, in other parts of Ireland. We're very lucky. No, I don't think it's just down to luck. I think it's down to the individual people who came together to promote Kilkenny as an entity instead of just promoting their own particular venue. I know that in another city they tried to get the hotels to come together to promote the city itself seeing what, after seeing what Kilkenny did. They had a row at the first meeting and never met since. The fact that you've held together in Kilkenny to promote Kilkenny in many ways has advantages, but it also has huge disadvantages. It doesn't have a rail network that, except unless you go through Dublin, it doesn't. It's not beside the sea. It doesn't have a third level college. So it, there are a lot of things that other cities have and other towns have that Kilkenny doesn't have. So it has to over. Uh, it has to promote itself more than any other place in order to in order to keep on a par. And the fact that it's run ahead is a major testimony to those like yourself, like the Chamber of Commerce uh, and the individual hotels and Kilkenny Tourism, that it has achieved the level of success that it has. Yeah, it is. You're, 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 you're so right. There, there are still rows, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite, but they're not public, at least. And, and there are every year in terms of how the money should be spent and where it's spent. And, and actually before, just before uh, everywhere went into lockdown, we had, we'd had uh, lengthy meetings with regard to ring fencing some of our, some of Kenny Tourism's marketing money towards international tourism uh, and, and, and conference tourism. Uh, and we'd, we'd agreed to take 30,000 euros of that money per annum for three years to invest and to try and getting more of that business here. Now, look, obviously that's not going to be the case and we, don't, we certainly won't be worrying about international visitors for the next nine to 12 months. And, you know, the, the lead in time for, for that sort of conference international business is two years, two to three years. So it'll be a long time before we see uh, that money when we start spending it done. But it's great to see that I consider the meeting with a, a cafe owner um, from High Street and with a jeweler from High Street um, and sit down and agree that, you know what, that everyone sees the benefit in getting, getting visitors to Kilkenny in, 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 a successful, in, in, in having successful tourism businesses and diversifying away from this tour bus mm. party mentality that for, for, for a lot of places, not just Kilkenny, it's, they're, they're the easy pickings. Um, and, and getting stuck into that and changing uh, that perception and changing the visitor that's coming is hard, costly work. Uh, and it's something that um, Kilkenny Tourism them in the Chamber have been working very hard on. Mm. I remember meeting with a man about 20 odd years ago who had been, who was made the uh, marketing manager for Board Falcha. And he was addressing a conference that I was at um, and he said that he knew within a week of joining that he was going to get an opportunity to meet with Tony O'Reilly. And he knew he had 10 seconds to make an impression. And sure enough, Tony O'Reilly came around and shook hands with everybody and said, and who are you? And he said, my name is whatever. It, and, uh, and what is your job? I said, I'm marketing manager for Board Falcha. And he said, well, what are you going to do to improve tourism in Ireland? And his response was, I'm going to bring in fewer tourists. Mm. Man said, that's a good idea. In other words, that you're not bottom scraping. You're not getting the, yeah. the people on the, on, the, on, the, on the streets in John Street on a Saturday night. You're getting people who are discriminating, who are yeah. uh, perhaps more mature. Now, you don't want to lose the, the younger people either, but you're going to offer a more focused uh, uh, option for them when they select Kilkenny as opposed to Galway. Or wherever for their tour uh, for their uh, Irish trip this year. Um, the, the, you, uh, when I was talking to you on Saturday, you mentioned that you were going to be busy uh, th this morning uh, at a meeting with Board Falcha. What's uh, what's the latest from Board Falcha? How are they coping <clears throat> nationally? Um, well, first of all, you know, like I suppose Board Falcha now has changed considerably and. It kind of morphed into two different organisations, yes. Falcha Ireland, which is responsible for the development of tourism on the island of Ireland, and um, um, tour, um, Tourism Ireland, which is responsible for marketing the island of Ireland internationally. Um, so Falcha Ireland, in, in fairness to them, have done a really, really good job at helping hospitality businesses 
through the last six months, uh, developing uh, work plans, uh, standards of procedure, and ways that we can operate and open safely. They have created a safety that we all display that um, will give people um, an understanding that we're operating at to, to a certain hygiene, uh, hygiene level. Um, they've been developing training for, um, for our teams in terms of ensuring that everything, is, everything from a safety point of view is at the highest level, but also then helping business. Um, the meeting I, I, I was at this morning, I suppose, could be described as a health check. And it was an opportunity to meet with a consultant myself and my financial controller and just run through everything that we've done over the last six months and to have someone look at it uh, with a set of outside eyes and see you know if we could have done things differently if we could have done things better in certain situations so it's really really helpful to have that uh, to, to have that support uh, behind us um, really yeah no every, everything they've put together for the hospitality sector and you, you can imagine there are so many arms to it in terms of pubs and restaurants and activity providers and museums, uh, B&Bs, guest houses, hotels, they had to create uh, operating manuals uh, through COVID-19 for each of those and do so in a, in, in a way that made sense, sense to the individual businesses. So they've really, really done a fabulous job and I, 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 I could do nothing but commend them. They also uh, worked hard to receive funding from, from government somewhere in the region of 25 or 27 million um, that um, businesses such as mine were able to draw down from on top of the restart grant. So, you know, uh, up, up to a maximum of 15,000 euro, euros was, was available to, to businesses such as mine. So that was really helpful as well. Um, and they've done, a, they've done an excellent job. Tourism Ireland are outselling Ireland um, internationally, albeit uh, online a lot at the moment, um, and ensuring, like, like Kilkenny Tourism did, in, in April and May, ensuring that the message is is ready and right for when people are willing and able to travel again. Mm. Well, we all look forward to that time. I'm just wondering whether anybody else uh, who's watching uh, this afternoon has any questions that they'd like to ask Colin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew I wouldn't get away with that. <laughs> well, just yeah. see. Everyone's in. yeah, there's John. Hello, John. Yeah, Ian, uh, just, just to reiterate a lot of what Colin said, I don't have a, a question for him as such, um, but, uh, you know, all, the, all this, the talk that he had there about um, Kilkenny and how fortunate we are and what we have, there was a very nice article um, in the Irish Times over the weekend and Kilkenny got very positive uh, reference in it. There was just one or two little comments which I think are uh, well worth sharing. And they talk about Kilkenny that it's, it's uh, in the Goldilocks zone not too big and not too small. It's cultured, but not pretentious. It's confident, but not showy about it. And if Kilkenny was a person, you'd totally go for pints with them. And I think that's a very uh, nice kind of um, summary of what Kilkenny is about. And the key thing really is that we shouldn't take it for granted. It's so important that we don't, you know, because, uh, and, and in the Chamber of Commerce, we, we try and utilize, you know, when we're holding events back in the day when we used to be allowed to and will again in the future sometime, we try to utilize the, 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 some of the wonderful places that we have. Uh, and we've used, for example, the like of Roth House uh, for a couple of meetings over the years. And it's amazing the number of people, you might have 30 or 40 people in, in the room, um, the majority of them uh, local Kilkenny people, and the, the number of people who say, it's the first time ever being in the building. You know, and there it is on our doorstep. So, um, yeah, the key thing is that, that, that we all uh, engage as much as we can and where we can and as positively as we can in all the things that are going on. And uh, Colin just mentioned there about, you know, um, the, the chamber that we're, we're, we're doing a range of things doing them differently, like you are in today, the Rotary Club, it's all on Zoom or something else like that. And um, likewise, we, we're, we're doing the same. We're still doing business, just doing it in a different way. And there's, the pandemic has nearly taken over our lives, but to the extent that we've never, nearly forgotten about maybe something even more significant, which is Brexit. So we have an event tomorrow um, and everybody on the call is more than welcome to attend. It's through Zoom. Just get in touch with our office if you'd like to, us to send you an invitation. Um, we're partnering up with PwC um, and having a look at what Brexit means for, for businesses in Kilkenny and that. And uh, then I, we have a chamber chat regularly as well. And again, you're all very welcome to, to attend these. Our next one is coming up this Thursday um, at six o'clock in the evening. And again, we'll be hearing from um, the local authority in terms of what they're doing and where our money is being spent because Kilkenny isn't the way it is by accident. It's planned and designed and it's invested in um, both financially and by the people of Kilkenny. 
yeah. so um uh, thanks very much to Colin for coming today and, and uh, speaking to us. Uh, I, I know him a good while. I work a lot with him now, obviously, um, but there's a lot that I didn't know about him and uh, uh, it's good to hear all where he came from and everything like that. Yeah, I think one thing you said there that we might promote uh, through ourselves is you mentioned there, John, uh, that uh, many people who went to a meeting in Roth House, that it was the first thing, the first time that they had been there. It's one thing for us to attract outsiders to Kilkenny places, but maybe we should be looking at getting Kilkenny people to visit Kilkenny places. I know a lot of people have never been to the Medieval Mile Museum, to, uh, to uh, St. Canis's Cathedral, to various places that are often off what they might consider they pass every day but never see, never go into, never, uh, never get a feel of what that has to offer and how much uh, they could be enriched uh, by a visit to that place. Uh, one of the places that is really attractive, that is very much under visit, is the garden in Roth House. In Roth House, it's uh, such a, a, an asset that has been developed and brought back to what it looked like over 400 years ago, um, and yet. It's probably the only uh, medieval garden in Ireland, uh, and it's, uh, as I say, off the beaten track. Roisin has just come in to say, not to forget that the 11th of October is uh, Kilkenny Day. The 11th of October is significant. It's the feast day of St. Canis, who, after whom the city is named. And I'm just wondering whether that's the reason that the 11th of October was chosen uh, as Kilkenny Day, and there'll be lots of attractions and free of charge events on that day. And on that note, uh, unless there are any other questions, I'm going to draw this meeting uh, to a close and to thank Colin for his time, uh, for the deep insights that he's given us into his own work in Kilkenny and also to his work in particular uh, as president of Kilkenny Chamber of Commerce. We wish the Chamber every success because if it's doing well, we're doing well. And uh, I hope that it manages to thrive in this terrible time through which we're all going. Um, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in today. Uh, this will be available as a recording. And next week on Monday at 1 p.m., we will have Brian Keyes, the current editor of The Kilkenny People. So thank you all and look after yourselves during the rest of the week. Sláinte